I'm Erin Wilson, and you are listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Welcome back to Inside NC Labor. My name is Meredith Watson. I'm a public information officer here at the North Carolina Department of Labor, and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Erin Wilson. I'm the Director of Communications here at the Department of Labor. And today we have Keisha Scotton and Adriana Jordan here with us today. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Would y'all mind starting telling us a little bit about yourselves? I am Keisha Scotton. I am the Administrator with the North Carolina Department of Labor Wage and Hour Bureau. I've been here for about 17 years. I started as an investigator went to a senior investigator, a supervisor, deputy administrator, and now I've been serving as the administrator for roughly about five years. My name is Adriana Jordan. I am originally from Venezuela, but I moved to the States uh, about 20 something years ago, plus I think more. Um, And uh, I've been with the department. I'm the executive assistant to Keisha and uh, we have uh, I have been with wage and hours since I started my tenure in the North Carolina Department of Labor I've been here 12 years and I started in the call center and uh, then went to a case analyst position and then I became the executive assistant to Keisha (laughs) well thank you ladies for being here with us today so our first question we're going to talk about is what does the North Carolina wage and hour bureau do Um, Primarily, the Wage and Hour Bureau focuses on promised wages, and that's anything promised by an employer to an employee. We also regulate minimum wage and overtime um, youth employment. Um, Some other acts that we enforce are the Controlled Substance Examination Regulation Act, Private Personnel Services, the Expungement Act, E-Verify, and Medical Payments. We don't do a lot of those, but probably 97% of our cases are wage payment. And the control substance part uh, is basically just the process of the employer do to test somebody. It's not, we can't dictate um, anything other than making sure that they follow procedures properly. Um, another uh, one of our acts is the private personnel. We do get a lot of calls about the private personnel. Um, and it's more geared to uh, staffing agencies um, and uh, let's just say talent agencies, the majority of them. What ha- the difference of this two is there is a licensing process and there's a certification or notification process. Uh, businesses that charge, um, this agencies that charge an applicant a fee to find employment, um, they will have to be licensed under this statute and we handle that process. Um, it's a little bit more com- you know, complex. There's you know, backgrounds and credit checks and all this other stuff. But then there's staffing agencies where the applicant is not being charged and the act of fees being paid by the business seeking to fill a position, then we do the certification process, uh, which is very simple. That process, there is no cost associated with it. Is you know, it the both the license and the certifications and notifications they uh, expire every year, uh, but we try to make it you know fairly easy for the individuals to just go through the process of getting themselves in compliance with that statute. Um, in terms of expungement, that's it's a very short statute, I think. It's a very short statute. Um, what it does is an employer cannot fire or hold it against an employee if they have had something expunged on their record. We can't get them their job back. Um, we don't get them any penalties or fines as far as if they're terminated because of it. Um, the employer is just penalized for terminating them or doing something adverse to them because of them having a record expunged. Yeah. And then we get into E-Verify. Um. Yes, E-Verify is for employers that hire 25 or more employees nine months in a calendar year. They have to E-Verify all of their employees within three 
business days, working days. Um, so it's it's pretty simple. Yeah. Well, it, it it I think people sometimes have some confusion about what we do with E-Verify. Um, we just, much like the control substance, we just need to make sure that the employer followed. We can't get them their job back. We can, um, you know, we're not Homeland Security. There, those are still things that go through that federal agency. We're just making sure that the employer is in compliance with the statute. Um, and that's what our role in that particular E-Verify. Uh, with medical payment, uh, we're talking about the employer, um, I always get, they cannot charge f for the process of hiring, they cannot charge that prospective employee a fee to like for background or medical or even testing, right? That's uh, correct. Like mm -hmm. uh, um, drug testing, they cannot charge the employee, make them financially liable for anything during that process of initial, you know, of onboarding. Yes, so we look at it as the initial act of hiring. There cannot be any charge for criminal background, medical records, anything like that. So it, it's, uh, it's a lot of this other, you know, like she said, the majority of them, if we have to put them, I guess, in order, is wage, wage and hour is gonna be the, you know, the core of what we do. And then after that, I would say probably private personnel and E-Verify. Medical payment and expungements are very rare. Very rare. And um, far controlled indeed. substance, private personnel, and, and um, E-Verify. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that about the expungement. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's not a very well known that we do it, but Right. Yeah, we we when that came about. I want to think in 2013. Yeah, somewhere it, around that time. It hasn't been that long that we've been enforcing that statute, but we do. Mm -hmm. So, what is the difference between the North Carolina Wage and Hour Bureau and the U.S. Wage and Hour Division? So when. I like this question because a lot of people are confused. They get confused and they think that we do it all. <laughs> and I wish we could, but we can't. So there is two departments of labor. There's the North Carolina Department of Labor, which is the state, and then there's the Federal Department of Labor, which is obviously federal. Um, we both do kind of do the same things. Um, we both handle minimum wage and overtime. Part of the Wage and Hour Act also includes youth employment, which is you think it will stand on its own, but it's actually part of the wage and hour. Um, so they also do youth employment. The difference about what, who handles what is jurisdiction. Type of business, if the if business engage in, uh, or the individual engages in interstate commerce, like the simple process of swiping credit cards is engaging in, you know, in interstate commerce. Um, the dollar volume of the business, the amount of employees of a business, if they have federal contracts, there's a lot of things that will separate um, the juris that, that will move the jurisdiction from them to us. Uh, typically, they won't. Uh, the Federal Department of Labor will not deal with straight wage payment. Like I work a week, they didn't pay me a week. They will not deal with that. They will not deal with promised benefits like vacation or a bonus or a commission. They will deal whether or not the employer violated minimum wage and overtime law. And then they do have the hazardous um, occupations. occupations for the youth employment. That's, you know, we're talking about, like, even the stuff that's been recently in the news about big chicken factories and all that stuff. That's what they will do. Um, we ha handle youth employment, like the certificate process for the youth uh, in North Carolina, um, minimum wage and overtime. But these are more specific to small business, very mom and pop kind of business, few employees mainly cash and even then they're still even if the business is not federally covered the employee and their duties may be federally covered so that's kind of where you know we separate duties <laughs> yeah so for minimum wage and overtime that's the concentration as far as the state department of labor and the federal department of labor and we start at looking at if the business makes more than 500000 in a year. So if the business makes more than 500000 for minimum wage and overtime, it automatically goes to the U.S. Department of Labor. If it's less, 
it may come to us as long as interstate commerce is not involved. Yeah. So, um, and I don't know if you want to get into this uh, tips because that's a big one that we people call us constantly, and it's a really it's a iffy question. So I'll let you take on it. Tips: um, An employer can pay an employee two dollars and thirteen cents per hour and then the rest of it can be made up through tips to make sure that they at least make $7.25. And the Wage and Hour Act, tips are listed under minimum wage. So the initial intent was for you to make enough in tips to equal $7.25. Um, the majority of employees that are tipped employees swipe credit cards so that automatically makes them federally covered. So usually when we get a tip complaint, we refer it to the U.S. Department of Labor because you have that interstate commerce that is involved. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of, you know, our call center, um, they have to be well-versed on this because you have constant people calling and asking and giving you these scenarios. So they do have to constantly be, you know, on point about what, information they're giving them because you know it's like well we don't want you to waste your time here you got to go to the feds and they don't understand but it's the department of labor don't you handle everything <laughs> i'm like no sorry <laughs> you know but it makes it fun it keeps us in our toes well you had mentioned uh, that north carolina wage and hour bureau handles youth employment certificates so we have a lot of youth working in our state can you talk about the youth employment certificate process sure um we recently launched and this is about a year and a half i would say mm -hmm. maybe longer yeah we, it's been longer than yeah a few years yeah we launched the youth employment uh id uh initiative and uh it's now the process is completely electronic um each youth under the age of 18 will need a youth employment certificate in order to work in North Carolina. It, a youth employment certificate is issued per employer, not per youth. So if you have 15 different jobs, you have to have a youth employment certificate for each of those employers. Um, the process, now if you go to our website, right on the first page, it tells you, you know, what you need to do. Uh, but Essentially, the youth is uh, to receive this youth employment ID number, which they can do on our website. They get that ID number, and once they have, uh, you know, a, a good job offer, a viable good, you know, offer, then they will give that ID number to that employer. The employer will then go on our website and complete step two of this process, and it's almost like a chain reaction because once they do that the system will send an email to the youth and let them know, hey, this business has created a certificate for you. Go ahead and take a look at it. We, of course, want to make sure that mom and mom or dad or the legal guardian is involved in the process and there's approval of an adult. So the system, once the youth signs electronically this certificate, the system will generate an email to the parent. Well, the system will prompt the youth to put an e the email of the parent or legal guardian, which then generates that last email for mom or dad or the legal guardian to sign off. Once that process is completed, the, the certificate is valid, and it will be emailed to the employer. The mom, I think, parents can pull up the certificate and the, and that last step, um, and then then everybody's good to go. But that certificate should be in the system before they start any physical work. And that's important for employers to know, do not let youth work without a certificate at all. Yes, and we issue, um, so far through December, I think we had issued 37,000 youth employment certificates. Mm -hmm. wow. And so the new process, that certificate means that the youth, the employer, and the parent have all completed everything, and, and that certificate is valid as long as they have not started working. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and Adriana reviews each and every one of those certificates. Yeah. So We review those on a daily basis to make sure um, it is a system, so we also want to make sure that we have that human eyes on those certificates. If we see something that's not matching, we will contact employers, which I do. Um, one of the things that we, so last year, 15-year-olds um, were allowed provision, you know, uh, the provision was put in place that they could work 
uh, in an establishment that had an ABC on-premise permit. But that expired in December. So certificates were allowed and the system allowed these in businesses that had ABC on-premise permit uh, to get these certificates for these youths that were 15. That's no longer the case. It reverted back to 14 and 15 year olds cannot work in an establishment that has an ABC on-premise permit. They can only do so if there's like outside grounds. Like let's talk about maybe a golf course, you know, where the usually the bar is completely separated from what they're doing. They're in a golf course or they're in a swimming pool, kind of that. <clears throat> So that has reverted, and employers need to, now they're like, well, what, the system's not letting me do this? Well, the, the statute, and I mean, the, pro, the temporary provision expired, and so now they are not allowed, so you just need to make sure that you're not working with youth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we review those on a daily basis, and we right now, typically, during the year, we average about 200, 300, that amount of certificate uh, changes towards the summer, because the kids are out in school, obviously. At that time, we will probably do about 600. You know, it, it could double in size and just on a daily basis. But we do have eyes on it on a day, you know, uh, make sure that everybody's in compliance. So, so let's say someone's looking for like a summer life earning job or something. How far in advance do they need to start that process before they start their job let's say if they start in June well the good thing about the certificate process online is that it's fairly quick it literally can be done within hours That's awesome. uh, as long as everybody does their part um, in, in in a timely basis and the employer uh, it, it you know we make it like that so the employer is forced to go on our website and read and understand what they're doing the certificate itself also tells them, hey, make sure that you are in compliance with all these things, because ultimately it is the responsibility of the employer mm -hmm. to make sure that that person, that youth that they're employing, is compliant with youth employment law. And so it's important that they, that, that they pay attention to what they're signing off, parents and youths alike, because, you know, things happen, but they want to make sure. Uh, one thing that has come up recently, and we wanted to I think we ended up adding a little disclaimer is um, when it comes to parental divorce issues we do not get involved in any of that that's something that needs to be agreed upon in court the certificate is going to be valid as long as a, one parent signs it so whether or not that youth can work uh, based on a, a marriage settlement agreement that is between the parents and not us. We would not get involved in any issues that has to do with family court. Uh, so that's one of the things that we have uh, recently updated in the system uh, to make sure the parents understand because he has come up a couple of times and we don't want to, that's not our position, that's not what we do. <laughs> and something else that we probably should mention um, when they're obtaining a youth employment certificate is the youth, the employer, and the parent all have to have separate email addresses. They cannot use the same email address when they are trying to get the certificate. The other thing is the U.S. Department of Labor has 17 hazardous occupations that youth are not allowed to work in. Um, so if a 17-year-old puts in a job that is hazardous, the system will not generate the certificate. Um, the North Carolina Department of Labor also has nine detrimental occupations that the youth um, cannot work in. So again, if one of those occupations is selected, then the youth employment certificate will not be generated. Um, one thing I've also that I would like to add is government institutions, any instrumentality of government, town, city, county, state, you do not need a youth employment certificate to employ a youth. We are exempt from it. It does not exempt you from the hazardous occupations of the federal, but it is exempt in terms of the youth employment certificate. So if this youth is being brought on on a recreation uh, center that is state, town, you know, county funded, or it is part of, the, of that instrumentality of government, then there's no need for youth employment certificate, which is interesting because I do come across a lot of those, uh, and I do have to let them know, hey, you know, we, you don't need to do it. You are a government institution or instrumentality of it. And as such, you don't need this particular 
um, certificate, but you still have to contact the feds to make sure that whatever the youth is doing is in compliance with their hazardous orders. And the last thing we probably should mention is um, a youth working for their parent. They can work for their parent at any age, however, they are required to get a youth employment certificate. And so those are a little bit different, so they would have to contact us because we have Shannon Council who generates those for the parents. Yeah, those are called parental exemptions. So the process is similar in nature um, because they have to get the certificate, but they don't any they can get the youth employment id number but we technically generate those in-house because we have to make sure that the parent owns 100 percent of the business it cannot be like mom and grandpa it has to be parents 100 percent own the business or you know either the you know the mother or the father or both combined but it cannot be any combination outside of that uh and they are allowed i mean we do have some certificates for six months old because they're you know maybe they're models or maybe they are you know an actress, a, an actress mm -hmm. and you know some some exemptions are mm -hmm. there for that type of occupation uh, but we recently had a mom I think that had um, she was just it's a seven-year-old and they were having them do uh, stuff for the business like mm -hmm. copying and you know and not by all means, but they do have to get registered, and as long as there's that open communication, and when in doubt, call us, we're here, we answer the phone, we promise. Better to be safe than Absolutely. sorry on that Absolutely, yes, 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 mm -hmm. but yes, um, and they can work at any age, as long as mom and dad uh, own 100%, you know, 100% of that business. So we've heard that the North Carolina Wage and Hour Bureau has been working on something to help streamline the process of filing a wage complaint. Can you tell us about the new online wage complaint submission form? Sure. Yes, so um, in the last month in December, we worked with our IT department to put together an online form that allows the employee to file a wage complaint online. They can file it at any time. Um, we do have a call center um, that is available 8 a.m. until 4.45 p.m. Monday through Friday, but with the online complaint form, you can fill it out at any time. And we review those on a daily basis. We started this in the middle of December, so so far we have entered 142 complaints. Yeah. So it's awesome. Um, they can they can enter it at night, on the weekend, um, looking, looking at improving our customer service so that is a yeah. good enhancement that we yeah have. some people it's if they you know they work all day it's hard to get out after five and it's hard for them and and you know sometimes the questions the or, or the doubts or the um you know the information that they're seeking and filing a complaint at the same time takes longer than their lunch time so this allows these individuals to go through the system and uh, and kind of look at the questions and hopefully answer them and if we have any questions our call center uh, our call um, our case analysts are contacting them and letting them know hey we received your complaint this is what we looked at we need clarification with this and if it's good to go then we'll take the complaint and we follow the process the same way as we would any other complaint uh, it makes it easier for them um, and we're constantly improving, so we do appreciate any feedback because we're all learning on this. We just want to make sure that is um, user friendly and that is clear. Um, you know, some of the lingo we understand it, but maybe the public doesn't. So we're working on improving that, and any feedback that they have is by all means welcome. Okay. So we've also heard about a new online wage and hour monthly presentation. What is that about? So myself and our deputy administrator, Lakeisha Cameron, we got together and brainstormed um, ways that we could really educate the public. And so what we came up with is that we would start presenting a wage and hour presentation on a monthly basis. It's free to the public. Um, the only thing that we need is an email address so that it will send you the link um, in order to join the presentation. But we're offering this every third Thursday of every month. Um, we have different presenters, some of our senior investigators, some of our supervisors, and then some of our investigators 
will present on a monthly basis and it just goes through all of the wage and well not all of them but like a um a summary of the wage and hour laws and it gives the employees or the employers an opportunity to ask questions and really put them in a place where they're educated on the wage and hour laws and are um, looking at making sure that they're doing everything that they're supposed to do on their end. Yeah, uh, it's important because we, I know it's often looked like we're just trying to get, you know, we get this on our call center all the time. You're just on, you know, on, on the side of the employer. And then the employer's like, you're just on the side of the employee. And we're not. We're here to educate, to make sure that everybody is, you know, knows what their rights are. Um, and our website offers a lot of that. They can go at our website, www.labor.nc.gov, uh, under workplace. Is it workplace rights? Workplace, workplace rights, rights, correct, yeah. Uh, you can go on there. There's a lot of information. Um, the good thing also with the wage and hour complaint and youth employment, right on the top of the first main page, there's the three links. One is how to file a wage complaint, how to obtain a youth employment certificate, and the online complaint. So those things are right there, front and center, for the you know for the, anybody to go take a look at it. But under workplace rights, you can see different subjects, the different um, you know breaks and you know vacation pay or uh, timely pay or separation of employment. All those topics are there for you to be able to look at it. Um, get some information and if you have any questions whatsoever I do like to brag about our call center because we are available they are um, there's hardly any wait time they there really isn't we try really hard so that there isn't a really big wait time and um, and people appreciate it because they get a live person they can talk to, uh, they run their, their concerns and we are able to either direct them where they have to go for the most part or, okay, yes, this is a valid complaint, we can go ahead and take it. And now that they have the online option, even if they don't have the time right there, they can go later on and do it. Uh, and so it, it is, you know, that customer service, it is important to us and we try our best to deliver that on a daily basis and be available to the public to the you know to the North Carolina citizens which is who we serve to wrap it up if there was one thing you could advise employers and employees on what would that be educate yourself um, we have a lot of we have the call center we have the um, fact sheets on our website we have the online complaint form we have the monthly presentations educate yourself um, there's always somebody available or some form of information that will help you know what your rights are as far as the wage and hour laws. To me, what I will say is document, document, document. Uh, if you are an employee, write down your time. Make sure you know who you're working for. And I know that sounds silly, but sometimes people do not really know the name of the business that they're working for. They think it's just this main name and it's no no there's franchises there's businesses that are behind this so know who your employer is their addresses their information document your time and employers make sure you keep track of your employees time and document and you know these are administrative processes that we do but it is the responsibility of the employer to keep records and that's the main focus here is employers keep your records and when in doubt, before you make any deductions, before you, you know, get mad and try to do something because you feel it's fair, call us. Talk to us. Before you do it, we may not be able to prevent the person from filing a complaint, but you can be informed and know that you did or did not do something wrong. And that's the best we can do, you know. It's uh, what I tell usually our callers and I tell even our call center is all the time. So just because something is not fair doesn't mean that the employer violated a law. We just need to make sure that we know what that is. And that's what we're here for. Well, thank you ladies for being here with us today. Is there anything else y'all wanted to talk about before we finish it up? No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yes, absolutely. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Y'all.
Thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. And remember, your safety is our priority.